안녕하세요 터미입니다 Let's have fun learning an energetic language Korean The theme of today's class is 여기 계셨어요? Were you here? Today we will learn three things First, particles 한테, 한테서 To or from Second, the past tense of honorifics for verbs and adjectives such as 으셨어요 Third, the past tense of honorifics for nouns 이셨어요 After taking today's class, you will be able to express things like I got this gift from my grandma Let's get through this the beginner level together and get a remarkable score on topic and be a super master of Korean 그럼 시작할게요 The theme of today's class is 여기 계셨어요? Were you here? Tommy seemed to be looking for the chief in the office. Let's listen to the conversation between Tommy and the chief in English subtitles. 그럼 들어보세요. 과장님, 여기 계셨어요? 네, 무슨 일이 있었어요? 사무실에 누가 찾아오셨어요? 아마 김 변호사겠지요? 그분 변호사셨어요? 저는 몰랐어요. 김 변호사한테서 서류 받았어요? 네, 이 봉투를 저한테 주셨어요. Could you hear well? It seems like Tammy did not know the lady was a lawyer, right? So she was very surprised to hear it. In this section, I will go over the vocabulary and phrases while reviewing the conversation one by one. 과장님, 여기 계셨어요? 과장님 is a section chief. In Korean workplaces, you should always refer to your bosses by adding 님 to their titles. So, let's look at some work titles. 부장님 is a department head. 이사장님 is a chairman of the board and 회장님 is a president as you can see 님 is in common for all words right 네 무슨 일이 있었어요 사무실에 누가 찾아오셨어요 사무실 is an office likewise something still indicates a room or a space for example 교실 is a classroom. 경비실 is a security room. And 객실 is a guest room. Next, 누가 means someone. This word is a combination of 누구, who, and the subject marker 가. By putting them together, it will be transformed to 누가, someone. In the conversation, Tami said, 사무실에 누가 찾아오셨어요? Someone came to visit the office. Here, someone is the subject of the sentence. That's why Tami used 누가, someone. Okay? The word 찾아오다 means to come to visit. Tami said 찾아오셨어요? Because someone came to visit her office. 아마 김 변호사겠지요? 아마 is maybe, probably. In the previous class, we learned 겠어요. Do you remember it? You use 겠어요 to guess something like I guess or I assume. Therefore, 아마, maybe, probably can be used often with this grammar. In the conversation, the chief says 아마 김 변호사겠지요? That could be probably lawyer Kim. As you can see, the chief used ama and getjio as a good pair. Next, 변호사 means a lawyer. Sa indicates certain jobs. For example, 기사 is a driver. 통역사 is an interpreter. 약사 is a pharmacist. 의사 is a doctor. And 목사 is a pastor. It is also common to add 님 at the end when calling these people. 
For example, it's will be polite and normal to say 기사님, 통역사님, 약사님, 의사님, 목사님. Okay? 그분 변호사셨어요? 저는 몰랐어요. 그분 is that person that a listener and the speaker are talking about in the conversation. Let's also look at some similar expressions. 이분 is this person and 저분 is that person over there. When a speaker and a listener both know the person they are talking about, as in, was that person a lawyer? In the conversation, Korean people use 그분 like the way you use that person in English. 김 변호사한테서 서류 받았어요? 서류 is documents. When you say 서류를 정리하다, it means to organize documents. 받다 is to receive. And the rule of 티귿 irregular does not apply to this word. So when you change this word to the yo form, it will be 받아요. 네, 이 봉투를 저한테 주셨어요. 봉투 is an envelope. There is a word with a similar pronunciation, which is 봉지, a bag. Next, 주다 means to give. So 주세요 means please give me. For example, 펜을 주세요 is Please give me a pen. Oh. Next, I'll explain the grammar. 한테 means to someone and 한테서 means from someone. You can only use them for a person, not for things. You can use them in informal or casual expressions. The formal expression for this would be 에게서, to or from. Grammar is easy because you just need to put 한테서 or 에게서 after nouns regardless of whether there is a final consonant or not. Simple is the best, right? In the conversation, there was a phrase 이 봉투를 저한테 주셨어요. She gave me this envelope. Let's see 저한테 here. 저 means I. You combine it with 한테, to, to make 저한테, to me. So the direct translation in English would be She gave this envelope to me. As you can see from 저한테, you use 한테 to a person only, not for things. If you use 에게 instead to make it a formal expression, it would be 이 봉투를 저에게 주셨어요. She gave me this envelope. Next, let's look at the sentence with 한테서 from someone. 김 변호사한테서 서류 받았어요. Did you receive documents from lawyer Kim? We will focus on 김 변호사한테서. 김 변호사 is lawyer Kim. And you add 한테서 to make 김 변호사 한테서 from lawyer Kim. When you make this into a formal expression, it would be 김 변호사에게서 서류 받았어요. Okay, crystal clear? Then let's improve our understanding with a quiz. What fits in the bracket? 학교 친구 편지가 왔어요. I received a letter from a school friend. Number one, 한테서. Number two, 함께. The answer is number one. To express from someone, you use 한테서 and say 친구 한테서 from a friend. The whole sentence would be 학교 친구한테서 편지가 왔어요. Perfect! Let's look at the next grammar. 으셨어요. In the previous class, we learned that the basic form of analytics is 으시다. 
The past tense is 으셨다. When you make it to your form, it will be 으셨어요. Let's look at how to use it. If the verb stem has a final consonant, you add 으셨어요. If the verb stem does not have a final consonant, you add 셨어요. When the verb stem has real final consonant, you say goodbye to real, goodbye, and add 셨어요 directly. In the case of honorific verbs, such as 계시다, to be, 드시다, to eat or drink, or 주무시다, to sleep, you can see she in common in all words, right? In this case, you just have to change shida to shosoyo to make them into a past tense. So, keshida becomes keshosoyo. Tushida becomes tushosoyo. And chumushida becomes chumushosoyo. Now, let's look at some examples with a final consonant. Kubunen. 이 신문을 읽으셨어요. That person read this newspaper. Here, since 읽다, to read, has real 기억 final consonant, you add 으셨어요. And it becomes 읽으셨어요. In the conversation, there was a phrase, 과장님, 여기 계셨어요? Chief, were you here? In the case with 계시다, to be, that is already she in the middle. So you add 셨어요 directly after 개 to make 계셨어요. Let's look at one more example. 우리 할머니께서는 돈을 많이 버셨어요. My grandmother earned a lot of money. Here, the word 벌다, to earn money, has the old final consonant. So you remove the old goodbye real and add 셨어요 to say 버셨어요. Let's move on to the case for nouns. For nouns, it is 이셨어요. When the last letter of a noun has a final consonant, you add 이셨어요. When the last letter does not have a final consonant, you add 셨어요. Okay? Let's look at an example. 우리 아버님께서는 이사장님이셨어요. My father was the president on the board. Here, 이사장님 has 미음 final consonant. So you add 이셨어요. And it becomes 이사장님이셨어요. Let's look at the phrase in the conversation. 그분 변호사셨어요? Was that person a lawyer? Here, 변호사, lawyer, does not have a final consonant. So you add 셨어요 and say 변호사셨어요? Now, let's check what we have learned so far with a quiz. What fits in the bracket? 부장님께서는 저한테 일을 The department head did not ask me to do the job. Number one, 부탁하셨어요. Number two, 부탁 안 하셨어요. The answer is number two. 부탁하다 is to ask or to plead. 부탁하다 does not have a final consonant, so you directly add 셨어요 to the verb stem to make 부탁하셨어요. After that, you have to change it to a negative sentence. You split 부탁하셨어요 into 부탁 and 하셨어요 and then put an in the middle to make 부탁 안 하셨어요. The whole sentence would be 부장님께서는 저한테 일을 부탁 안 하셨어요. Okay? Oh. Now, let's try listening to the conversation again, only in Korean this time. Your listening skill must have improved in this short period of time. 그럼, 확인해 보세요. 과장님, 여기 계셨어요? 네, 무슨 일이 있었어요? 사무실에 누가 찾아오셨어요? 아마 김 변호사겠지요? 
그분변호사셨어요저는몰랐어요김변호사한테서서류받았어요네이봉투를저한테주셨어요 Now it's time to practice reading it out loud. This is one of a few times you can practice for yourself. So please focus on reading out loud. 그럼큰소리로읽어보세요과장님여기계셨어요네무슨일이있었어요사무실에누가찾아오셨어요아마김변호사겠지요그분변호사셨어요저는몰랐어요김변호사한테서서류받았어요네이봉투를저한테주셨어요My grandmother was a nurse. For the second sentence, I would use 의셨어요 Past tense for honorifics. For example, 우리할머님께서는환자분들을많이아끼셨어요 My grandmother took very good care of her patients. The second homework is memorizing vocabulary. Please memorize 40 words from 641 to 680 on page 9 of the elementary vocabulary list. You can take a vocabulary quiz on these 40 words for free! So please take full advantage of it. Nothing to lose! Excellent work today, you guys! You guys made my day! I'm so happy to teach you Korean and thank you for handing in homework every time. I will see you in your next class. 그럼오늘도행복